fourth base of success, Vimangsa, can be translated in lots of ways. Circumspection, analysis, ingenuity. Essentially, it's the discernment factor and the basis of success. And one of the passages in the canon equates it with the Four Noble Truths. When we think about the Four Noble Truths, it seems awfully far away. But what they are is basically the Buddha's problem-solving approach, pointing out that the big problem in life is the fact that we cause ourselves suffering. If you're going to solve any kind of problem, first you have to look for the cause. Then once you found the cause, then you solve it at the cause, not at the result. In other words, the cause here is craving and ignorance. So we have to develop a path that can attack the problem of craving and ignorance. It's like going into a house. There's smoke filling the house. If you try to put out the smoke, you'll never come to the end of it. You've got to find the fire. Once you found the fire, you put out the fire, then the smoke is no longer a problem. In the same way, we have to tackle the problem of suffering right here at the mind, and the causes in the mind. We get practice in that as we, as we meditate. Because the discernment factor in concentration is called evaluation. And it's giving you practice in thinking in terms of the Four Noble Truths. You look at why the mind doesn't settle down. That's the problem you've got to solve. And then you look for the causes. In this case, sometimes the causes are in the body, sometimes they're in the mind. You try experimenting with the breath. See if you can make the breath a better place to stay. And you try and you try and you try again. What's important is you don't give up. Think of the Buddha. Before he gained awakening, he didn't have any guarantees that he would gain awakening. All he knew was that he really wanted it, and he felt like his life wasn't worthwhile if he didn't find, at least make the effort. So he kept at it again and again. And he made many mistakes. Think about it, six whole years of self-torture. But he was able to realize that that was a mistake. So he put it aside and kept going. He didn't give up. He kept looking for new ways to tackle the problem, and finally succeeded. And so it's the same with us. We have to keep tackling the problem from different ways until we find the solution. We have the advantage that we have teachers who can give us suggestions. But even then, their suggestions are basically general principles, and then we have to learn how to apply those principles to our own case. For instance, with the breath. And John Lee says to think of the breath going down the spine. But sometimes you find that when you have a weak back, it's better to think of the breath coming up the spine, starting with the soles of the feet or going up the legs and up the spine. So you take the basic principles and you play with them. The same with the mind. If you find that the mind is a problem in settling down, you try to find some way of thinking that can cut through the problem, at least for the time being. If anger is a problem, You 
you're not going to be able to uproot anger quite yet, but at the very least you can cut through it. Find some way of talking to yourself to say, this is not really what I want to get into. I don't need this. You might think of it as a kind of food that you're eating on, but it's miserable food, the kind of food you'd be embarrassed to have anyone see you chewing on. Anything that can help get, get you at least past the anger for the time being. So in this way you begin to use your own ingenuity in finding the problem, trying to figure out the cause, and then finding different ways of trying to attack the cause. And in this way you develop your discernment. It's not the case that when you're practicing concentration you have to just get the mind still and then sometime later use your discernment. You have to use your discernment to get the mind to settle down. It's only when you can get the mind to settle down that you really understand it. Because discernment is about understanding the mind. You can't skip this step. If, the, if you don't understand the mind well enough to get it still, then you're not going to be able to go beyond this. To get higher levels of discernment. Because everything you need to know about is right here. For example, the five aggregates. You've got the breath. That's form. You've got the pleasure that comes from being with the breath, and that's feeling. There's the perception that holds you with the breath, the image of the breath that you have in mind that helps you stay with the breath. That's perception. You're thinking about the breath and adjusting the breath, evaluating how to make the breath comfortable. Once it's comfortable, evaluating how to keep it comfortable. And then when you have something solid like that, then how to spread that sense of well-being so it fills the body. All of that is fabrication. And then your consciousness, your awareness of all this. These are the things you're going to need to know, and this is the best way to get to know them, is turning them into concentration, a state of body and mind where things come together. So it's important that you realize that as you're doing concentration, you're also developing your discernment. And it's not simply a matter of memorizing what's in the books. It's learning to see a problem, get sensitive to the cause, and then figure out ways of attacking the cause. That's how your discernment grows. You can memorize books for years and years and have all that knowledge in your head. But if you don't know how to use it to solve the problem, then it's never going to do you any good. As John Lee says, what we're working on here is a skill. And part of the skill you learn from the teacher. For example, you're going to make a basket the teacher teaches you how you weave the basket, how you make different designs in the weave, and a general idea of the shape. And then you have to make your own basket. And your basket is not going to look like the teacher's. If you give up at that point, you'll never get any skill. If you decide to be on the basis of that one basket that you have no talent, then you'll never develop the skill at all. But if you say, well, I've just got to learn, the next one I'll do better. You look at the first one, see where it's not good, what's wrong with it, then you try to make adjustments. The second one's not quite good yet, well, you keep making adjustments until finally you get something that is satisfactory. And you've learned not just from what the teacher told you, but from also from your own actions. So 
seeing problems and trying to figure out solutions. That's how your discernment grows. That's how you develop a skill. The same principle applies here. You can learn the basic principles, but in applying the principles, you've got to use your own powers of judgment, your own powers of perception, your own ingenuity. All of this comes under the, the fourth base of success, and it's what brings all the others to completion.